I'd like to call this meeting to order for Frontier Regional. And we'll call the meeting to order for Union 38. First thing, uh, we're going to uh, review and approve the minutes from joint meeting on the 14th of February and the 22nd of <coughs> January. For Frontier, all in favor? If you have action, we'll pick it up in the minutes. <coughs> Any public comment tonight? I do. Okay. Mr. Public? <coughs> Mr. Public, um, is that time of year where almost election season there's a couple members of our committee who have decided not to run again after uh, two members that are here after a long stint on the committee so i'm going to start by talking about doug Fulton. <clears throat> doug has been serving with us since 2010 is that correct that's right all right so just about nine and a half years um and uh as yes, chair over there chair for Part of that time. Part of that time as well, over in Sunderland. And Doug, I um, just want to thank you for everything you've done. Um, even this year, I've only worked for you a short time, but this year it's been really been um, amazing your leadership through a difficult budget season. Um, I really want to thank you. And you, I tried to talk you into running again, and I didn't, I failed. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to come over and give you my gift for your service to the community and the kids of this district. Thank you. My next award, <laughs> my next uh, school committee member I want to recognize is Cindy Womet. Cindy joined us in 2005 to 2008 on um, the elementary, and then from 2008 until today at the, at the, on the Frontier Board. So she came on board right as my first year or so. Just got on board just to make sure I stayed in line um, as the assistant <laughs> principal way back then. Um, I know Cindy's story a little bit more since I was sitting at the table in many of those meetings. Um, she's one of the finest chairs we've ever seen, I think, in, in, in a school committee in a school committee seat. She allows laughter, she demands um, respect, and she keeps things moving full, full force. And you've, you've done so much for this district over those years. Um, I remember when your daughter graduated, I had to write Wu Met, W O O, because I was going to pronounce it wrong on stage. Um, but those are those are the, the, the fond memories I have, and you really will be missed. And if you ever want to come back, we will, we will yes. find a place. Yes. Yes. The last person who's not here tonight is Jan Vlaska. Um, I've only known Jan this year. And, he will be missed, and we will catch him hopefully at the next Deerfield meeting if he's there. Um, I'll just keep it short, he's not here. We'll bear some next time, don't tell him. All right, so that is my public comment. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> okay, we do have some new business tonight. We're gonna be doing an interview tonight of our, hopefully our new business director. Um, we're gonna invite Shelly to come up now. If you wanna come up, sit next to Darius, please. So we're gonna give you the, the yep. center seat here, Shelly. This is Shelly Pareda. Hello. Shelly was screened by our interview screening committee, along with several other applicants, um, and was recommended to move forward to here. We've all received um, last week questions for tonight's meeting, and those have been distributed um, with your input and the input of the committee. Um, if I could have people go around and just introduce so Shelly has an idea of who's asking questions and who's smiling and all that kind of stuff. Mary? I am very Deerfield, Cook City, and Trevor McDaniel. Trevor McDaniel, Deerfield Elementary, and 
Uh, Damien Fosno on uh, Frontier Street. Elaine Campbell, uh, Conway School Committee Chair. Maureen Nichols, Waitley Elementary School Committee. Katie Edwards from the Waitley School Committee. Ashley Dion from Conway Grammar School. Phil Cantor from Conway School Committee, Frontier School Committee, and Conway Selectman. Ira Van from the Conway School Committee. Doug Fulton from the Sunderland Elementary School Committee for another month. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Gottschalk, Sunderland Elementary School Committee, and Union 38. Maisie Shaw, Sunderland School Committee. Keith McFarland, Sunderland School Committee, and Frontier. Dave Sharp, Dave Hill, School Committee. Jen Cutterback, here for the elementary. Bob Hallow, Wheatley Elementary, and Chair of Frontier Region. Nice to meet you all. There is Don't ask me to remember your names. There will be a quiz at the end of the night. Maybe I go back the other way. So, so we, do have, uh, we do have 10 questions for you. Certain people are going to be asking them. And the first one, I think, is going to be Judy from Frontier Region will be asking the first couple of questions. Right. Um, so the first question is, turn your resume to life. Explain your education and experience as it pertains to finance and schools. Please. I have a little bit of a cold, so I'll try to talk loud enough for everybody to hear me. Let me know if it's not loud enough for you over on the side. Um, so I started my education going to school for massage therapy, as you can see from my resume, um, completely outside of a, a business or finance realm. Um, loved the program. Um, when I got out of school, realized it was a lot harder to survive in that field than I had anticipated. Um, and while I was in school, I was working in various offices. Um, I quickly learned that organization and that business mindset came pretty naturally to me. Um, so I started seeking more of those positions. Um, I would say my career took its uh, largest tilt uh, when I started working for Amherst Montessori School in 2010. I started there as the office manager and within eight months was promoted to the director of finance and operations. Uh, at that time, I decided to go back to school and pursue my bachelor's in business administration. I had a one and a three year old at the time, so I did an accelerated program uh, with Bay Path University. I did a Saturday school. It took me a year to complete, did 12 hours of school every Saturday for a year with little ones and a husband and still working full time, so it was pretty intense. Um, but I, I knew that I wanted that degree to continue to support my role. Uh, so I stayed as the director of finance at Amherst Montessori School for another three years. Uh, and at that time, I was promoted to head of school there. Uh, when I took on that role, I went and uh, sought my Montessori administrator's credential, um, which is specific to Montessori, but it's uh, sort of like a business manager certification with the state, um, and decided to pursue my master's degree in nonprofit management and employment. Um, that was another intense venture with an eight-year-old and a 10-year-old at the time. Um, did an accelerated program for that. It took me 18 months to complete that degree. Um, finished out my time at Montessori and decided that I wanted to consider the philanthropy component of my master's program. So I uh, pursued a job at Eagle Brook School in Deerfield in the fundraising department. Um, fundraising is absolutely essential to nonprofits and schools. However, asking people for money very quickly, I learned that was not going to be something that I wanted to do long term. Um, so I started seeking business positions again. Uh, I had actually applied for this job when it was posted last year, but did not have my business administrator certification in the state. So I began pursuing that. Um, and in the meantime, accepted a job with the city of Chicopee, uh, where I started in September and have been there since. A friend at a hockey game about a month ago said, hey, did you hear the Deerfield position is open again? And um, here I am. So that's about it for my resume. So do you want to explain a little bit about why you're applying for the job position of the manager at Frontier? 
Um, you can tell us the first time too. Um, so as I said, you know, organization, the business mindset, um, problem solving, strategic planning, all of those pieces have been something that I've been passionate about in my entire career. Um, and having left that and stepped away from it, it became more to the forefront to me how much I wanted to get back into this type of role. And after having been at several schools, wanted to stay in education for a service nonprofit. Um, so, you know, there's some convenience to this position. I live in Sunderland, um, so I know some of the district. Um, it's close by. And it's also a leadership position, which I have been seeking. And I think my skill set and my education and experience can bring a lot to this community. Um, so it seemed like a really good fit, uh, both the first time applied and even more so this time with the timing. Well, that leads into my questions. Um, you mentioned uh, you wanted a leadership position. What would you say your leadership style is? Um, so I pride myself on uh, operating with um, integrity, uh, respect, and compassion. Not that that's always perfect or in that order, but uh, that's what I strive for, at least, in who I show up as to work and as a leader. Um, I believe in servant leadership. So one of the things that I try to do with any of my staff is um, ask them questions of how I can help make their job easier or better or how we can make improvements in the department. Um, I do have very high standards and I do hold people accountable and expect people to be respectful and understanding within the department as well. Um, but I think that that team-oriented approach works really well and um, really being there as a support system for your staff when you're in leadership role. And uh, what is your experience in supervising office staff and can you share a difficult conversation you've had or a time you've had to take corrective action? Sure. Counsel somebody out of a job. Sure, sure. Uh, like <laughs> um, so at Montessori we had a staff of about 30 to 35 including substitute teachers. Uh, the teachers primarily reported to the director of curriculum, although everyone did essentially report to me. The office staff depended um, on the time of year, how many people we had. It was between four and six. Uh, currently in Chicopee, we have five support staff in the office. Um, so not a huge office, but certainly um, similar to what size you have here. Uh, in regards to a difficult conversation, I have an example from Montessori that was particularly challenging um, because I put someone into a role that I felt that they were ready for, uh, trained them for Montessori teacher certification, which meant that the school paid for their $15,000 tuition, uh, put her into a leadership role, and quickly realized that it was not going to be a good match. So we had to have many conversations about how it was not working out, um, get her to come around and see her side and the school side in it, um, and then essentially come to an agreement that she was going to move on and see better positions. Um, and that was really challenging because we had spent resources, um, and not just money, but time having her trained. and having a co-teacher with her in that year, so had to have that conversation with the board um, about the loss there, and then also counsel her out of the position. It was really challenging. It was difficult, you know, I think we both cried several times. Mm -hmm. um, I was invested in her, she was invested in the school, and it really just was not a good match. Um, also, in your experience, what is the most challenging part of creating a budget? Because we've been through this many times at this table. Um, obviously, limited resources is always a challenge, uh, you, whether you're private school or um, publicly funded by the state, your funds are limited in some capacity. Uh, so I think that that is one of the greatest challenges. Uh, I think prioritizing the needs and the wants of the different departments. Um, you know, everybody, in my experience, thinks that their classroom or their department has the greatest need, um, so it's hard for people to see the bigger picture. Uh, so being able to communicate that transparently, uh, 
to the best of your knowledge um, so that people really understand that in your role, if you are making budgetary decisions, you're doing it in the best interest of the entire community. Um, and, and trying to make sure that the needs of the staff and the students are met with limited resources. We're aware of school committee Tom Wick, because we always ask our principal to dream bigger and put more in the budget, and she is very frugal, so, you know, we're, she's learning, but it's like, oh, do they really need that? But, but we push her all the time. I have such problems in my life. She does. It's really challenging. Thank you. Um, can you, have you had experience as a human resources contact for payroll benefits and insurances? And have you prepared for and participated with the annual audit in your current capacity? So, one. Two parts there. Two parts there. Uh, yes, I have um, done both of those. Uh, at Montessori, we were a small organization, so we didn't have a human resources manager. So in my role as director of finance and operations and in my role as head of school, I was responsible for benefits um, that com was comprised of onboarding new hires, so making sure that we had all of the correct paperwork um, filed, making sure that if they needed insurance or information about insurance that they had that. Um, as the head of school, it was my responsibility to work with the brokers to make sure that we were getting the best policies at the best rates, completing censuses, um, is that a word, censuses or censuses, sorry. Uh, you know, to make sure that we were getting the best for employees for the money that we were spending. Um, and also working with the board on what type of benefits we could offer, whether we had to make cuts or could we make additions to any of our benefits. Um, currently now, I'm not involved in any of that. I am involved in some communication with insurance companies and with the employees if they're out on disability or workers' comp, uh, but it's more related to their payroll versus um, insurance necessarily uh, but at, at a minimum seven years at an executive level dealing with benefits and human resource administration uh, in regards to the annual audit i have not gone through a public school audit uh, i have gone through seven private school audits with a cpa um, similar but certainly different standards because private schools are not required to follow the same state standards. Um, but it's a similar experience. You know, they come in, they analyze your books, they test uh, your tuition, they test your expenses and your revenue, uh, and then they make a recommendation through a management letter to your school, which I would then have to present to the board as to how we would respond. your approach to delegating tasks to employees and how do you ensure that those tasks are carried out to completion? Uh, so I try to look at everyone's job as a whole. Um, so if something comes to me that can be handled by someone in a different role and it's more appropriate for them to handle it, I would certainly pass that off. Uh, for example, today, uh, there was a requisition that needed to be approved and we needed more information so I kicked it back to the clerk to do the research that was necessary to get that requisition approved. Um, I also try to uh, have employees step out of their comfort zone so if it's something that maybe is outside of their realm but if I feel like they have capacity and depth to handle that I might have a conversation with them about taking on something new um, to get some things off of my plate and also challenge them a little bit in their position. Um, as far as making sure that things get done, I, I think, again, I talked a little bit about accountability being one of the things that I pride myself on, and that's accountability for myself and, and for my team. Um, I think it's important that calendars are utilized, uh, that, I'm, that there's check-ins between supervisors and staff, some of that being, being verbally and some of it just through email um, and trying to have an awareness of what is going on within the department so that I can follow up with people, especially if there are things that I have delegated or that I need from someone that's going to someone above me that's expecting something of me. 
Down the, uh, the same line, essentially just said it, uh, how do you work with deadlines and accountability? So again, the calendar is really important to me, creating checklists. Um, I like to use Google Calendar for myself so that I know what I have for timelines and deadlines. Um, I like to create a uh, weekly check-in for myself, which is a list of my priorities for that week. Some of them might be ongoing if we haven't had time to finish with them. Uh, and when I was um, supervising at Montessori, it's not a practice my current supervisor wants to do it in Chicopee, but when I was at Montessori, I also asked my team to create the same type of check-in. We emailed it out to the entire group because a lot of times your work overlaps or you're working on something for someone else. So it just created a way for us to have some checks and balances and be aware of what's going on. Um, in regards to my, my own uh, work, I like to make sure that I really understand what the timing is of a deadline. So if somebody asks me for something without saying, can you do this by Friday, I will ask so that I have clarity um, if I don't already know what the expectations are. Um, and I also try, if possible, if I know that I can't meet a deadline, to ask for more time and be upfront with that person that I'm not going to be able to meet that. Outstanding. All right. <clears throat> you can bite this off one at a time or, uh, or all at once. Uh, can you give examples of how you oversee purchasing, record keeping, warrant preparation, and payroll procedures? And how do you assess the efficiency of systems? Uh, so Montessori was very small. Uh, we didn't have a large procurement system in place, uh, but we did try to have checks and balances so the teachers would have their budget and they had freedom to buy what they wanted within that budget, but something would always have to come through the business office or the head of school's office. So we had forms, they had to have backup documentation, and then we would put the purchases through. Uh, in Chicopee, obviously, it's a lot more similar to here, um, making sure that we have the proper backup documentation for requisitions, um, that the guidelines with uh, purchasing are being met, if a purchase is over 10,000, 50,000, um, making sure we have quotes if needed, uh, con state contracts being referenced, city contracts being referenced, um, sole source provider letters, letters. So all of that comes directly through me. Our clerks begin the requisition process, and it comes to my, me and my boss for approval. Most of the time, if I'm there, it's stopping at my desk before it goes through. Uh, so for example, we had our, a clerk put in today for 24 Chromebooks to be purchased. Uh, and I know that auditing is gonna wanna know exactly where all of those Chromebooks are going down to the teacher and the classroom that they're going in. So I kick that requisition back to the clerk and let her know I wasn't going to approve it without the proper backup because I didn't want the invoice to get kicked down the road. Um, so really trying to be that stop before we get to a problem with the next level that's above my office. Um, and then in regards to payroll uh, policies and procedures, it's the same kind of thing. Uh, we deal with a lot of stipends in Chicopee uh, and we have guidelines that if, if something requires a signature, it has to be original signature, it can't be stamped. So I'm looking for all of those details on the documentation to make sure that we have the right information so that when it goes to auditing, they're not gonna reject it on us. And if they are, then doing the legwork necessary or delegating the legwork necessary. And just to, to lean back on the tail of that, yeah. thing, which is the, uh, if you find a system to be inefficient or you you know, you're doing stuff and you're like, oh, that, that could maybe be, what's your approach to, yeah. to system efficiency? Uh, I think this is really challenging actually, especially going into a uh, organization that has had long-term employees that are used to doing things in a certain way and that's why you do it because that's the way it's always been done. Um, I, I'm not a fan of changing things just for the sake of changing things. I think that's not a use, good use of time. But I do think if there are better ways to do it, we should be asking questions and uh, seeing if we can find technology especially to make processes and systems more efficient. Um, 
I also think that you have to tread lightly with this. Coming in new to a position, you have to observe, you have to watch, you have to learn how it's done first before you can go in and just start implementing change. Um, and I also think asking for ideas from your staff versus just saying, this is how we're doing it moving forward, and enrolling them in the process and, and getting them excited about it. Um, we have a woman who all of a sudden, uh, I've been trying to introduce Google Docs, and she's never used Google Docs in her life, and she is so excited about it, and her excitement is getting the rest of the group excited. So I think if you can bring people on board um, and they can see the benefit of change, um, it, it can be an easy process and it's challenging at the same time. There's some job protection when things um, that have always been done a certain way, if we continue doing them, you know, it, it makes people feel comforted in their role and knowing that, that they're secure and this is how I've done it and this is how I've always done it. So treading lightly, finding the right balance and working as a team. Coming over here next. Um, so, have you experienced fulfilling the role of procurement officer in an administrative capacity? And can you walk us through the process you use to ensure that secure, fiscally sound purchases are adhered to? And I might just add one editorial, which is can you do it in the public school setting rather than in the public school setting? Yeah, sure. Um, so, I don't have a lot of control over the budget in Chicopee. Um, Really, the principals have their allotment and then they decide how that's spent. Um, so I'm not the procurement officer either in, in Chickamauga. We have a procurement officer um, just because of the volume of purchases we're doing with an $86 million budget. Um, but again, I'm one of those first stop people. So clerks enter, it comes to me. I'm making sure that all of our backup is in place, our processes and procedures have been followed, doing the research to ensure that if it hasn't been followed, what do we need so that it can go through to the next step. Um, if something does not get through the procurement department and kicks back to me, that requires additional legwork. Uh, sometimes things get through my office, procurement and all the way to auditing, and then auditing is kicking it back to us. So it's a lot of research in those steps. Um, we have an account right now that I discovered yesterday is actually negative funds. I'm not even sure how the database allowed that to happen, so that required a phone call to auditing to see if permissions are different on that account as to why um, this particular expense Sometimes our grants are allowed to go negative or a revolving account, especially our um, school lunch, because we know that money is going to come in on a monthly basis. <coughs> but this particular one is a standard account that the clerk should not have been able to enter a requisition with negative money. Um, so at this point, I'm trying to figure out how we got there, were there expenses we didn't anticipate, how that happened, and what we're going to do to rectify it, especially because we know we're going to have an additional Twenty to thirty thousand dollars for the rest of this school year. So it's a process um, where I am right now. It's not solely my responsibility because I'm not the business manager, uh, but I am working in partnership with the business manager to, to solve those types of problems. What would you like? What do you like to do outside of work? Uh, I have two very active boys, uh, so we do a lot of sports watching in my household. They're hockey players and baseball players, so I spend about eight months in a hockey rink, um, which I love. We, a lot of our close friends and family come from our hockey team. Um, love watching baseball as well. I would say that's probably one of my biggest fun and stress relievers is just being there for my kids. Um, I love to read, although I don't have a lot of free time to read. <laughs> Uh, I love to cook, and more recently, my nine-year-old has decided that he loves to cook, so we've been doing a lot of cooking together, which has been a very humbling experience as a parent. I have to have a lot of patience with him <laughs> in his process, and it's been really nice to share something special with him. Um, I love to be outside anytime I can, more in the warmer months, but love to just enjoy the fresh air. Um, <clears throat> questions. So, I would love to know what you think 
the priorities, my priorities, priorities would be in the first six months of this role. Did you want each person to No, no, no. We'll be here to bid night. Anyone who has a thought on that, like what do you think the priorities of this position are coming into it? I don't know. In college, they've explained to you about this job. A bit. Yeah. My school days, we all think differently. And all the bills, you know, go through the central office. We have an archaic system. Uh, Asking them to get invoices scanned so that the board members can actually look at the documentation before they sign one more. Okay. Uh, there's an awful lot of catching up. Our uh, business manager left uh, short notice. She didn't give us 30 days, but she left at the end of the year, and it was a ton of work to be done. I don't know that it's all caught up yet. All right. We hired a consulting firm to uh, come in and basically put a Band-Aid on it and try to get it back up. I don't know that the Band-Aid is working. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I think that needs to be caught up. I'm going to have to go through a great big tool list to start with. And the stuff that you really think needs to be done and why. So, but you need to know that it's a complicated thing. It's, Particularly, you have one school committee, and here you have five separate school committees, and you have a union school committee, which people are here today from the four towns. Uh, a lot of shared expenses. There are people that are shared from one town to another town. I don't think Frontier shares anybody anymore, other than the superintendent and business manager, or the business office. But it, it's complicated. So, I mean, it, it takes you have to have a real mindset to get into it to try to figure it out and understand it and to try to accomplish the goal of making it all of our fish. Just watch it. You know, it, it is not an easy job. I mean, you, I would expect you're going to be very frustrated in the first time you have it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I Echo that. We're also a really good bunch too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're really, you know, very accommodating. We, we want to help you succeed, and you work a lot with the towns as well, and the people clerks, and so we're a good family. And uh, as you know, living in the area, it's a good place to be. We're a great school system. We all try really hard, and we're all learning at the same time. So. Um, I think, I think you'll do fine, and I think, uh, you know, there is a lot to learn and a lot to catch up on, but, you know, we'll be in good shape. I would just echo that, well, what was said already, but also encourage you, I would encourage you to build relationships with key, the key stakeholders, but the school committees, certainly, the staff, but also the town administrators. Um, we are small towns, so there's, a lot of interest in the schools and your job will have a lot of contact with the town offices so it would be smart to build those relationships early. Thank you. So I would say in the first six months do your best to put your imprint of your personality into the position and um, you know establish your honesty and your integrity and in your the way you do relationships because um, it, it is a it is a learning curve but um, as long as people can rely on you for the truth and can rely on you for your best efforts and mistakes are made, that's okay. But um, just be yourself. Yeah. Um, I, I do think it always helps to have an eye come in from the outside and look at the systems that are in place and have been in place for since the dark ages that could really need moder use modernization. And I mean, oh, Chickpeas, what the fifth biggest school district in the state. So, I'm not sure how modern they are, having been in the, 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 the administration <laughs> building in Chicopee, so I'm not sure about that, but, um, you know, I really think we could be a lot more efficient um, and do things more cutting edge than we do it, because we always do it the old way. Um, and I would really appreciate somebody coming in from the outside to do that. I would encourage you to say the regional agreement and to really clarify what's covered in it and what's not covered.
heard of him a lot. Um, building relationships with the, the five towns, I'm not sure. Um, this region doesn't match the height of the GB budget, but it's spread so wide, and we have to be really prepared for the five committees and the bottom of meetings that are going to happen. I'm going to add one. Please about you know, the five meetings. I mean, Darius has done really well piggybacking meetings. He doesn't want to be out five nights. You don't want to be out five nights. So they, like lately, we, we went to morning meetings, which has worked out really well for us. So we sometimes we piggyback Frontiers meetings, which is at night. So you come out one day, you kill two birds with one stone. So Darius has done a really good job trying to cut down on some of those meetings so you could spend more time at home, you could spend more time at home too, so. Mm -hmm. Except for the spring when we have budgets. We <laughs> have town meetings, that, there's, there's five, four town meetings that you, that you probably will be going to, and there's finance committee meetings with the select boards, you know, figuring out the new budgets. I mean, there is some meetings. Good thing about it, you live close by, so run home, get some eat, then you go to a meeting where some people, you know, we've had, you know, live further away, which they can't just go home and have something to eat, so. Well, certainly I can speak from the independent school side of things. It is, it is considerably different uh, managing the business uh, functions at a public school from what you encountered in the independent school. But the issues are basically the same. It's just the protocols and state requirements that are considerably so we kind of much of what you've experienced, yes, we we'll experience here, but from my perspective, it's the most important thing is the ability to not just learn the people within your department and within the administration, but to get to know, as everyone here has said, you've got to get to know the towns, you've got to get to know the, the players in the towns and understand the financial constraints within the towns. <coughs> so. Um, I would just say that you have to lead by serving, and if you hadn't, yeah. does anybody that does that really takes into consideration those people who are working for them, working around them, working above <coughs> them? So um, I, I just think that's wonderful. I think if you still do that, and I have no reason to believe you don't, you're going to be a perfect figure. Any other questions? Thank you for this opportunity. It's really been a pleasure um, over the last three weeks. Moved really quickly, um, unexpected. You know, I, I've been happy in Chicopee, but um, I'm really excited about this opportunity, and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here to speak with you. And thank you, Arias, for all the conversations we've had and, and the <coughs> staff that I've met with, and I've appreciated getting to learn about my town. So. Thank you. So, so there, I guess I'll speak first, maybe it's a second or whatever, but um, does anybody in, in our group have any other questions for Darius? If, if not, if not, then we're, we're going gonna, we're gonna to look for a motion. So. That was a terrible cheer you were sitting there. It was very low. It was very low. It was the, uh, we ought to, the, the frontier that we authorized the chairman to appoint a subcommittee to go into negotiations with the candidate and any successful negotiations that we offer for the job for a period of at least two years. Unless somebody else has something else to say. Um, Bill? Is so we have a motion over here, Phil, you or Derek Trevor's first. So. I was just curious, Tom, for like that. So let me explain the process. The process is tonight. The school committees need to make a. This all has to be done in the public, in a public forum, as awkward as it feels. Um, it has to make a motion of how it wishes to proceed moving forward. So it could move. It can make a motion to um, pending successful negotiations. Move forward 
with, with Shelley. Right. It could kick back to the search, the search committee to come back with a different candidate or any other motion it wants to come up with that's kind of like an outline in the email. So, um, but um, the negotiations, um, as I kind of outlined, can be done by a subcommittee. Then this committee does have to get back together to vote the final contract. There's no way to put a final contract in place tonight because you know both sides need to have the opportunity to have legal advice and so on and so forth. And I've been sitting here when we try to negotiate 26 people on one. It's not fair. It's not a fair setup. So um, I think what you're looking for tonight is a motion. Um, to move forward with the candidate or not, and then you would create, a, the chairs would create a subcommittee to negotiate such contract. And then we'll have to set a date when we come back to vote that and move forward. And I'm sorry it's another night out, but that is that's what we have to do, and I agree with my legal counsel. Do you want to state your motion? Excuse me? Do you want to state your motion? Because you have all of those different things. That's basically what I said. Yeah, I don't think we. Can you admit, can you state your motion but not include yours and let the subcommittee take care of that? Okay. Thanks. Well, did we uh, uh, authorize the chairman to appoint a subcommittee uh, to uh, begin negotiations with the uh, candidate that we've seen tonight and uh, to report back uh, with, uh, with their conclusions? You want anything else? Second. <laughs> I'll make the same motion for the grammar school for uni for the I'll second that. Does anybody else have any other questions? Before Can you we just say what the motion Sorry. was? Yeah, you need to move forward with the candidate. Oh, hold on. Hold on. At the subcommittee. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Katie's, got a, Katie's got a question first. Yeah, Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Okay. okay, so on a motion for Mount Decker and a second by Cindy to authorize the chairman of the Frontier Regional School Committee to appoint a subcommittee to begin negotiations with the candidate, Sean Ferreira. I just like to offer a job, but it's well, the motion is for negotiations. For the yeah, for negotiations. Frontier points a subcommittee, and if you have people from the from the union on a subcommittee also, he doesn't get the from everyone. No, I have to have just the frontier. Mm -hmm. like to appoint Shelley Pareda as the next business mayor pending successful I think successful we need to say that as yeah, in, the, in the motion, that's why I'm... Pending, you just have to put pending I'm successful in the negotiations. Perfect. 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 That that's makes fine. it very clear, it's far more positive. It's Proceed more with the appointment. I think that's what I said. <coughs> there we go. We I could have printed it. The kids are waiting the motions the contract, just like the superintendent's contract, has to come back to the full committee to be voted. So, you say any successful negotiations. So read it one more time. Uh, motion to appoint Shelley Pareda as the business manager pending successful negotiations and a joint committee. Perfect. Katie, did you have a question? Yes. <clears throat> My understanding is that this position requires certain certification, and I'm assuming that the committee went through all of that and made sure that that was in place, but my understanding is that it's still in process, mm -hmm. and so I just want to understand the thinking if by chance it didn't come through, or is there a chance that it would it just, I, I'm pretty confident it's going to come through. It's currently um, pending, and um, uh, Shelly has taken the, the proper steps to get that to go through. It's, it's going to go before a review board based on her experience and where she's at now. I don't see it as a problem going through. Um, with, with certifications in, in Massachusetts positions in public schools, this is, this happens frequently. Um, as long as you're, you have um, the proper um, 
backlog of information going into the process, and you can show that. We've seen that. We know that's going to come through. Um, looking at the all the applicants that we did have, we only had two that were. We only had one that was certified completely, and one that was in process of being certified. Being certified. So, um, so we look at it that way. You know, we could actually hire Shelly without the certification as long as it's pending, and we can see that it's going to go through. So, Thank I think you. I should probably have said that the last statement first. Was, oh, okay, we have to but it it's a common sure. thing that happens. Um, you know, well, it seems like it's a challenge for hiring this position is that you have to. That's a final condition in the final vote. Anybody else have any questions? Not a question, but we'd just like to congratulate our the applicant, Shelly Pareto, for being the finalist, for getting this far, and for being the one that we're negotiating a contract for the position with. So, well done. Yes. <laughs> so, Peter, we have almost voted. <laughs> so, yeah. we have a motion from Bob and seconded by City of Frontier. All in favor? For Frontier? For Frontier? No? Yes or yes or no? Oh, yes. Okay. I guess unanimous. Yes. Abstain. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Um, we had a motion from Trevor. I didn't know. Oh, was that I mean, from the the lady. Lady. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yep. Did you second? Yeah, I second the same language. Trevor second. Yep. Yeah. Okay. No further discussion. I assume. Voting oh. members. Voting members. All in favor. <coughs> Thank, Thank you, you very Shelley. much, committee. <laughs> Congratulations, Shelley. <laughs> right. So, so we'd be looking to form a subcommittee of the Union 38. I guess I would start by asking if anyone wants to volunteer to <coughs> serve. Because if not, I'll just start. <laughs> I'll do it. Katie. Katie and Trevor. Just don't make it too big because it's, the idea is a small company. If no one takes offense, I'll cut it at oh, it's Trevor also. and Bob Holla. <coughs> So they can make a meeting time outside of that. We are going to have to schedule a joint meeting. Right. But I don't know when you want to do that. Well, I guess the three of us can get together and we have to get together. Do you guys have to make the frontier reps? You want to just do Google poll? Yeah, I guess I'll do the Google poll for the next one. Just as long as they come out here, who's going to represent? I put my name in, but. So it's four of us now. Anyone else from Frontier? Yeah. No. So there's four yeah. people already. I'm not, I'm not going to sit in between this <laughs> movies. We didn't play yesterday. We didn't play. Because I was in between. <laughs> we may have to rent your services. <laughs> right. We'd be tired. So we do it. We do need a fifth, just in case we need a tiebreaker. Okay. Mary Mary's perfect. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> no more basketball. Maybe baseball. <laughs> okay. So we have the. Right. And then I will create a next meeting day. <clears throat> It'll probably be, it won't be until May. But just so we can get realistic, we can show you, just see how realistic what all this is going to be. Between vacation, we have town meeting, we, we have three in a row of town meeting, so we may before we know it. So. But we can, we can It'll probably be, I'll probably shoot for the second week of May. Yeah. Are we good? 
between so now and the second week of May, the subcommittee's yeah. got me. Yeah, right. get this right. done. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. <laughs> you guys got to go with the contract for us to approve. Right. But there's going to be a meeting basically to talk about strategy relative to the new group of Correct. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just we need strategy. So I don't think we need to recess to notify Shelley. No. <laughs> no, the reset, the, the uh, executive the session was recess. only if the committee wanted to meet to discuss Shelley's contract in executive session, which would be a big orchestrated thing for us to do, but it is your zooming power we want to discuss, we want to make sure, you know, she could take every Wednesday off, that right. kind of stuff, you could put that in the executive session, I guess. All right, good. All right, ready to get going here? Yeah, bye, guys. Thank you, Shelly. We got a. No way. I was trying to say something about absurd. All right, let's do this. We got, we got, we got five more things to vote on. The first thing is to review the two-year contract with debris law, law offices. So Second. You guys seen them? Does anybody want a copy? No. <laughs> Any questions? I'm going to be upset you didn't take your copies. The only thing I could, the only thing I could tell you, I found out today that uh, the law office has been working the last year with no contract um, because somebody wouldn't give them a contract last night. So, so I'm just. Just let you know that. So yeah, the only the only color I could ask that is that he uh, we've been talking with uh, with Russell. Right? Um, he talked about jumping the whole contract up, and I said, you know what, budgets had already been set. Can you do it over a two two year deal? And that's why you're seeing a two year growth instead of okay. just all in one. So it was actually um, I asked him, to, you know, do do it that way, and he agreed. And, um, right. That's why that's also a two year. Usually it's a one year, but I said, why don't you make it a two year? You spread over that growth that that growth that up. Uh, Expensive for two years, that would make it easier, especially the budget's a little bit tighter. So, so at Frontier, do we have a motion? Uh, and Sydney, we second. For Frontier, all in favor? We have a motion for the union. So moved. And second. Okay. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm passing, uh, I'm passing around stuff for the next two votes. Just so you in all in favor? Katie. Thank you. You got an agenda. If you don't need it, don't take it. So the next is discussion to vote on substitute pay increase for 2019-2020 school year. Going or going or, well, we can't still move up. We didn't propose anything. Yep. So basically what we did was we said at the last um, time we, we raised sub pay that we should at the beginning of next school year, and you asked me to bring it to this meeting, um, when that we should boost up next year. So I passed out, a, it's coming around a little graph of what the sub is going to happen between now and 2023, where um, minimum wage is going up to $15 per hour. And so did you get one that went through? There's, yeah. Oh, I skipped there. So one's going one way, one's going the other way. This is complex stuff. So I, those of you who have it, I'm looking for a recommendation for... I think the sub is the only document that wasn't sent out of the So we're just looking for 2020. We're just looking for next year, but it gives you an idea of projecting ahead. Um, so I need a motion from Frontier for seventy-nine dollars and sixty-five cents. Is that what it is? No, no sorry. No. All right. So reading through this, basically, um, to help you kind of figure out what's going on here, you have the year um, in a state minimum wage going from left to right, and then what it breaks down to um, for day rate. We pay our subs by day rate. This year we moved in 2019, we moved the sub rate to $80 an hour. We made eight hours a day, um, and it comes out to $78 for the union, and Frontier is $75 a day um, based on, 
the minimum wage. Okay? So if you look at next year, the union, because it works slightly less, slightly more, um, they are going to be paying, um, if you're following minimum wage, the amount of hours they're paying would be $82. So then, starting in January of next year, our $80 per day rate is not enough. So, you know, we are looking to find. So, um, we can increment, there's two, two routes we can go. We can incrementally, just each year, we're going to bring us back next year as well, which is probably, probably the right thing to do based on budgets and how things are going. But I'm looking for um, next year, if we want to move that to $85 per day, um, or any number from 80, you know, from 83 to 85, somewhere in there. But you're gonna have to change it. You can see the year ahead, you're gonna have to adjust it again. So I just, that's why I'm showing it there. So that, um, so Two questions. Yeah, are we comparable with other schools in this area? And do we have any difficulty getting subs? We have difficulty getting subs that's based mainly on the market, probably less than the uh, pay alone. Um, we are making the adjustment this year. We are comparable with other districts. Um, you are not required, and I didn't say this the first time through with some of the committees, being a municipality, you're not required to fall minimum wage. But I think it's, we send a message that we're not paying minimum wage to take care of our children um, during the school day. I hate to put it that way, kind of quiet measure, but that's been said over the years. Okay. So the sub rate column has to be, or should be above the column on the right, the uh, rate per day. And it just or strikes or me going forward, forward that it's, it's, we're looking at 85, 90, 95, and 100. Or, or, or we match the state minimum wage, or right? Yep. Well, if you match it, then you then you're you're not you're talking seventy nine dollars and sixty five cents or eighty two dollars and eighty eight cents. So if you make it an even eighty five in year one, we do like to keep it the same so that we don't have competition between the two buildings or the five mm -hmm. buildings. Because right now it's eighty dollars for this year. Oh, because Frontier works a little less than that. I guess it. Maybe for just a one-year uh, decision. I'm looking for 2020. What do you want the sub rate to be? Just Here, I'll put it at 83 yeah. or 85. Just that. Okay, we'll move for 85. I have a motion. I will move for Frontier. Second. Motion from the union for 85. You get a second. I'll get a second. For Frontier, all in favor for 85. So moved for the union, all in favor of these. Well, I do too. What about we go to 15 now? Thank you. What's that? Okay, I'm but sorry. If we go to 15 now, 15 an hour, we go to minimum wage, what a livable minimum wage would be now. So you go to essentially 97.50? Yes. No, you go to 100. You go 100. I would argue the towns can't absorb that cost separately. Yeah. <coughs> it might be something we look at. You know, I was going to say, we could build it into the budget. I mean, I'm just saying you pay people who work at Walmart more than you pay people to be in front of a classroom. I don't really think no. that's right. You're looking for a different quality in person. Well, tip, typically, well, a, well, 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 typically a frontier, if there's an aide in the classroom, the aide runs the classroom and the substitute is the aide. Not a frontier. Not a frontier? The elementary oh, excuse me, out there. I knew I heard this. Here. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so in the elementary school, the aide runs a classroom. The substitute is the, is the aide in the room to help out. The frontier is... It, it's, not, it's not a practice in all schools, but in most schools. I mean, I'm just saying, if you want a warm body or if you want somebody with some set of skills, that's what you're, you know, picking kind of way in there. I'd rather have somebody with some skills than just a warm body. My, my statement would be that I don't disagree with what you're saying, but I think from a budgetary standpoint in this year, that's a pretty healthy... Well, if we actually case. had numbers on how many sub hours we have, we could actually see a number of what that jump really would be. Really? Well, the sub phone rings constantly. Yeah. Every day. Every day. Every day. I can provide, yeah. I can provide that. I mean, do you have in your head a rough number? No, five degrees. 
Mark is looking up for one of them right now, one of the schools. You're going to look at it and you're getting over a 6% interest every year. I think it'll fall over. We'll build into that 15. I personally think the whole thing's ridiculous to build the 15. 15 should be the minimum well, wage now. Absolutely. So, and again, do you want a warm body or do you want a skilled person? ASOP computerized system <laughs> where teachers can put in where they have need subs and they right. can project months and in advance. Yeah. Out, you can, so I could right. say, yeah, I can make it May 31st. It, it, as a sub, you can sign up for dates, and then as a date goes closer, then it does the emergency phone calls, emergency or right. closer to um, the date phone calls. But, so that, that's in place, so we have an idea of what's going on. I think as fine. long as we're within that range of all other schools right now, that might be something for a conversation down the road, maybe for next year, but so that everybody's kind of on board with that. But as long as we are keeping pace with other schools, I think we're good. Just pushing the envelope a little bit, Cindy, because I think it's a, a, a type of No, it's been pushed before. We've had this conversation right. before, so but that's I all. think one of the things that's important is to be comfortable with other schools. And push that argument at all, maybe. I think we should, for consideration for subsequent years, we should have a plan going forward. You might could take it up to the 15 and have us in place. Or join the ladies for that. Right. Exactly. Answer your question? That's fine. I'll bring it up again, I'm sure. I'm sure. So, in that case, the union. I just, I just have a, oh. I just want to make a comment that we have to also think of the fiduciary responsibilities of the school committees with the towns, and I don't disagree that they should earn a living wage, but I think that's part of a broader um, budget strategy overall, is how do we get more money to the schools so that we can hire more people, it's not just about the so. so I'm just a little worried that we overcompensate here, but we will then end up being shortchanging in other parts of the budget. Mm -hmm where the towns are going to be constrained. So I would caution us to go too quickly, too, too fast without the town being with us. Well, I also have said this all frequently. If you also penny pinch your budget, you're going to lose more school choice people, which many of us live on. Whereas if we just keep raising the quality of our schools, we'll have more school choice, and then our budgets will be easier to balance. I so, agree. You, know, <laughs> so you want to get 5,000 per child. Right, but you do want. So, and it Mark, so, I think we're, I think we're, I think we're in the weeds. Mark has a little information <laughs> for us here. So, just looking at what we pay for regular and spent subs out of Frontier, we divide it by the seventy-five dollars an hour or eighty dollars. We'll end up by seventy-five dollars an hour. That's three hundred and forty-six. That's three hundred forty-six days of subs. So, with a seven dollar an hour increase to eighty-five dollars, that's twenty-four hundred and twenty-four dollars. If you went to $100 a day, that's $8,650. $8,650. So we have the motion at 85 for the union. All in favor? I believe it ends up for the no. voting members. One, two, three, four. Nine, zero. So Frontier, we have a motion? We voted in groups. So great conversation tonight. Keep up. Keep it moving there, Robert. All right, so we, we have the, the 
pass out the calendars and keep one for myself. Sorry about that. Um, the um, calendars in front of you, that, and I kind of told people in the um, smaller meetings before we looked this over, the hot spots within the calendar for probably are going to be for discussion, but this is the calendar being um, before you. Um, has a full day, so it has a um, no school on the 30th of August. It starts school with um, teachers on the 27th, students arrive on the 28th for two days before the long weekend. It has a full day of school on the 20th of December. Um, going back in time, whenever we were at 21 or less, um, we had a full day of school before the December break. So, um, so that kind of falls that, but the, I know the one thing that was going to be people might want to talk about, maybe not, maybe just vote this calendar, uh, was the day off on August 30th. Um, Which is a Friday before Labor Day. Right. Instead of a three-day weekend, you get a four-day weekend after going to classes for two days. And then the other, the other, other thing I was going to kind of talk about was the early release. We're going to be using that model for one more year, but we'll be looking at it next year reporting back to the school committee um, uh, how we're going to do professional development. Now I can kind of say it out loud, like Louise Law leaving in a change of her, she kind of leads the professional development to change the delivery model with a new person stepping in. Um, and we haven't, I haven't had any time to really focus on that this year. Um, I'm just looking for an extension of that one more year, knowing that it's something that we have to look at. Because I different um, comments on that. So who's going to be responsible? Who's going to be responsible for planning early release dates? The principals? Right now, it's done as an administrative team, so it's led by um, uh, Sarah Mitchell and Louise Law. Kind of, they take the lead and with the superintendent right. to kind of lead the curriculum and the principals. We also round the table and kind of calendar out the year uh, what the different building needs are, what our different um, focuses are that year in the district. So, um, you know, remember, as you remember last year, we, we changed it, the early release dates not to occur in the middle of the winter because the amount of chaos that was happening with snow days and then having early release or delayed starts and early release and that kind of stuff, um, that was uh, looked on favorably. We also divided up, I hate to say the 666 method, um, but we've done, we divided up the um, technology building-based and district-based into 66 six and 6 amongst the, uh, um, amongst the schools and that's um, received feedback. Positive feedback. We've also right now we're um, polling the staff about what they wanted from professional development, what they got, what they would like to see, and at least collecting that information as well. So um, usually at this meeting you'd have a feedback on that, but I, I knew this was a very important time, so I can do that. But I can have that come in the future, especially next year. It would be great if you reach out to families and get feedback also going forward. I think that's an important group. About the early release? About the early release. It's kind of a part of the comment a little bit. I don't know if this is the same in other schools, but that teachers really want to stay and not have early release in September when things are just getting off the ground and have them in June when <laughs> everybody's crazy. Are going a little bit crazy, so I don't know. If we can revisit the idea. Or? The reason that they're loaded up front is because the amount of professional development you're doing in June goes into the summer. So while you can do stuff, it's just not as, if you're trying to get different initiatives off the ground um, and working with staff to be doing things that's gonna happen in the classroom and affect change that year, I think you're gonna have a stronger success. I hear what you're saying in the sense of where the kids are at, but you're gonna have a, a stronger professional development effect on the classroom that's happening in, in September. So that's the flip side of that. Um, yep. Marie? So at the start of school, the 30th, having that off and being there two days that week, as a parent, I find that horrible. <laughs> it's very disruptive to have two days and then have a four-day weekend and then come back. It doesn't really put everybody in the routine. So I'm not a fan. So right now the contract is written, says you cannot start before the Wednesday of the last week, of the week before um, Labor Day without consent from the union. Um, and, and right now, one of the two unions has said if we're not doing the Friday off, then teachers will come
back on Wednesday. So you're looking at two days either way. Could we just start the following week? Well, you, you, you could. So the positive side, the positive side of starting before Labor Day is you and teachers, I think, the teachers around the table want to chime in on this, they agree or disagree, is you get your classes up and rolling. Um, if there's a lot of excitement, a lot of energy, especially the little guys, um, you know, a, a full five day week, they probably wouldn't survive. You know what I mean? Changing from sleep schedules and all this other kind of thing at the end of the summer. If the, I know at the secondary level, you see who your classes are, you're able to establish what you need to do, and you have that kind of long weekend to do the final prepping for the, to get the year kind of really rolling. In, at the high, middle of the high school, it's all orientation, expectation, syllabus, you know, that kind of stuff going through, and, and you're kind of getting that all out of the way, and you're starting for real when you come back from Labor Day. So I actually, well, I can, we can debate about the Friday. I do think the two days start up and then going back is, is a, I think it's a positive thing because there's so much energy. You know, you get teachers coming back to the building. You have a professional day before things going. If you did that and you started and stopped, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I did. Hey. When we used to start after Labor Day, it was made for a long June. Mm -hmm. Like by the time you got snow days and whatever, you were like going to June. We did that a couple of years ago. Really late. Like, when the elementary school was getting the uh, roof done, mm -hmm. and then we start after Labor Day, and we went almost to July. <laughs> When I was Not first on the school committee, they wouldn't start before one, but one started before, one would start before, and one wouldn't start before. Yeah, the day. Not always yeah. And it was a disaster. <coughs> it was, it was Sydney? They don't know. <coughs> um, I work at Smith Relational, and I've been in <coughs> school, and I've been there 14 years, and this has been in place for us where we do exactly this, where we have that Friday off, and it's exactly what he says. We get in there, teachers have a day, the students come back. All that information is going out. You can get that information back really quick because you only have two days to really work on it. You get all your syllabuses out. Everybody's saying hello. And you go away and you kind of take a breather. And you go, okay, how'd that work out? What can I change? And then you come back for four days. So I don't know how it would work in here. We did try it. I think it was successful. But for my school, hugely successful. Um, it's just a nice way to start school after a nice long summer office to do it in small spurts. For us. You know, the flip on the, you know, an average, you can't all predict what all parents want. Some parents, yes, will look at it and say, oh, two days, and it's, it's a very difficult, challenging week for daycare or whatnot, work schedules. But on the other flip end, I like to look at it like it's still one last large weekend at the end of the summer that you still can do something fun with your family and have a four day, you know, blast at the end of the summer and not feel like the summer's come to an end on, you know, August 26th. Yeah, you gotta find some daycare in there, but in the end you get along with it. Um, I appreciate the two days before, I think that makes a lot of sense, but I, I really don't understand the Friday because you have Labor Day off. So you have three days, you have a long weekend. Why do we need a longer long weekend? Um, and I just think the rhythm. Four is better than three. <laughs> Four is always better than three, but a lot of people don't get that Friday off. <laughs> so I guess the teachers have been off all summer. <laughs> and I, so I, I just. What, what Darius was saying before if you guys don't want, if you guys want to have school on Friday, the teachers aren't going to start until Wednesday. It's right. still going to be a two-day. It's going to be Thursday and Friday, which is. It's going to be just Thursday been. and Friday. It's still going to be two days, no matter what. Keith, okay. um, just just give my prejudice. <laughs> I do not like starting before September at all. However, <laughs> I work with a, a, a lot of teachers from around the Northeast, and this is a fairly standard model. Anybody else have any questions? When's the last day of school this year? 14. You know, the Friday. There's a couple of seniors that have blogged for poorly about the superintendents. It's like snow days. It was a really bad post It weren't as bad as what they were last year. Maureen? I had a question. Um, January 17th. Why is that a half day? That's between the two semesters. 
of the high school. Final planning and 38s. Right, and so, I'm sorry. So, in the past, just the high school's gone a half day, and the union has not. It's kind of caused confusion in the district, and so we're just doing the whole, it's a full day for teachers, half day for students. Yeah. Well, they run yeah. Not continuous. So this elementary school keeps a half day of school. Yeah. Yes. Any other questions? Yes. <laughs> okay. So on Frontier, any other questions? All in favor? Frontier? I'll make the motion for 38. We have a motion from Bob on the 38 calendar as proposed. Trevor second. Any further discussion? Uh, voting members, all in favor? Next is uh, school committee meeting schedule. Everybody's got it in front of them, I hope. Yeah, you're welcome to just be um, The school committee model is basically based on this year's model. Um, basically, as a committee in your smaller committees you certainly can change dates or move dates around you just have to as I kind of said hit stay in your lane you have to see what everybody else is doing um, that kind of thing I did stack them again with the flip-flop and trying to create equity there um, with late meetings and early meetings and that kind of thing so just one question I'm curious. is it the problem with doing the joint meetings like this was it to get more together and that kind of thing is that I was wondering why we don't do more of these versus you know just everybody you know. You know, if you could add another one or two, we might like, squeeze the schedule a little bit. Well, maybe it's something to look at next year. As you're looking yeah, I mean, it certainly season. doesn't work during budget season, as you yeah. know, um, on that. The problem is, is that some, I think it is when you break out of this meeting to do your sub meeting, because you guys know that I make mean, a very, very light, your meeting yeah. agendas are very yes. light. And so if there is any issues going on, you're going to have to have some sort of side meetings or a <coughs> meeting or that kind of stuff. So okay. while I would want it for yeah. my personal life, it's also a lot of preparation. I, mean, I got yes. staff at every single meeting ready to go and, yep. and kind of bounce them off. And this kind of meeting, when we have heavy topics, we can kind of stay on track, but we can go on for hours and hours. <coughs> I'm not sure how okay. efficient. And then business offices, they have to prepare twice as much, but yeah. we'd be on the money. <laughs> <coughs> Do we have a motion from Frontier? So moved. Second. Thanks, Keith. All in favor? School calendar, Frontier. <coughs> so moved. A motion from the union. Just looking at uh, it's possible to make a motion with <coughs> exception of the piece. March. Assembly of the school committee meeting, we move to the 17th of the 10th. <laughs> can, we, can we do that? Can we do that like in February? You make a recommendation during your meeting? Yeah, we do that later. Let's put it off. Yeah, yeah next year. Yeah, I, I know that. Yeah. That may not some time to bring it up, Vegas. Yeah. So, do we have a motion? Yeah. I'll make a, As is. Great. In the second, Trevor? Sure. Great, Trevor. Yeah. All in favor? Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. We got one more. We got a five year transportation contract. We need the pole down. Olivia, second. Any discussion from Frontier on the new contract for the bus for the next five years? 
Frontier, all in favor? Union 38, motion. Motion. Second. Five, six. Any discussion? Seeing, yeah. Seeing none. All in favor? Zero. Okay. Thank you. Need a motion to adjourn for Frontier, please? Okay. Oh, don't you forget. Bob. <coughs> Cindy, second. All in favor? For Frontier? So moved. And motion for adjournment? So moved. Bottom and Trevor? What's that? Second. Oh, second's all over the place. Everyone's anxious to go. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Frontier, stay right here and everybody else go over.